Cool. So we're here with Reese Miller. We live. Yeah. We live. Hashtag we tell loud. Peter. We tell hashtag <laughs> loud. Long time, Peter. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm blessed. You, you're a lot I'm more good. bigger since last time. China T, you know. One of the gym bros, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to put on the muscles and. Yeah, I'm trying to get lean, <laughs> trying to get sexy. You know what I'm saying? What's? I'm already sexy, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what are you saying? What's your socials? We'll start off with that. Uh, Instagram, Reese Miller, R E C E. M I L L E R underscore. Have to shout out my brother Cardo Blonde as well. K A R D O underscore Blonde. B L O N D E. Genius. But yeah. Come on, come on. What, what does Cardo do as well? Cardo is a genius. So he does <laughs> producing, music, graphic design, mixing, you name it, bruv. That's the guy. So I think he's the best engineer in London, personally. Nice. What, what, what makes him the best? Can I just ask that? Maybe because of the synergy we have, like I grew up with Cardo, innit? So I've known him since I was about 11. Mm. I'm not going to say my age now, but <laughs> I've known him a long, long time. So maybe I'm just biased, but that's my brother. He's the best. How, how did you meet? Met him at school. Um, Brethren's ever since then, man. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, so since we're talking about that, um, I think you two used to be in a group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Urban Maestro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually saw you perform. I was, I was telling you off camera before, years ago. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is years ago, maybe about, I'll say about 10 years. No, no, about 15 years ago. Fucking about 15 years ago. It was uh, my friend Lau's birthday party. Yeah, yeah. He had a sit down meal and you lot came and, well, you lot came as a group, as like the act to perform for his birthday as entertainment. Did he go private school? Yeah, he went Coles. I remember that. That was you remember? our first paid show. Yeah, come on. And, and you must have been show. young there as well. Very young, very young. Yeah. Um, we jumped off stage in that, trying to be like... I remember like, still. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was good though, it was good. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was a vibe, that was a vibe. I was nervous <laughs> as fuck, but we made it happen. <laughs> what, what age did you start that group then? Uh, Urban Maestro must have been, because we were called Nothing Long Soldiers. Oh, wow. From like, yeah, <laughs> seven to eight. And then we turned it official about year nine. So what's that, 13, 14? Nice. That's when Urban Maestro, the birth of that started. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how long did it go on for? I would say maybe about to we've got 19, so I'd say seven, eight years. Okay. Seven, eight years, but we put in mad work, bro. Like yeah. that, that built my foundation. Like that taught me how to rap and song write and structure and all of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 Urban Maestro was my foundation, bro. So you didn't, you didn't feel nervous at that age? Um, do you know what? I did and I didn't. I did because obviously like you're performing in front of people and all of that and eyes are on you. However, I had my brothers there. Mm. When you got two other people there, it's almost like a cushion. So it was, it eased the pressure a bit, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. But in the group it was just you and uh, Cardo? No, no, it was me, Cardo <coughs> and a guy named Blinks. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so three of us. Nice. You still speak to everyone then? Or I speak to Cardo, links here and there, but you know how shit goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like grow apart in that. But yeah, I saw Blinks the other day, man. It's all blessed, it's all vibes and that. Nice. Yeah, he's So wh why, why, why did the group break up? Um, just politics, man. Like, not, well, not politics, but as I was saying, people just grow apart. People have different interests and shit. And it just happened naturally. It wasn't a thing where, oh, you're a pagan, you did this and you did that. People just have different interests and it just, mm. the passion wasn't there for the group anymore, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, oh, fair enough. Yeah, man. But shout out to Blinks, man. That's yeah, the guy. <laughs> no. right, and if we fast forward to today, um, yeah. how would you describe what you do? Ooh, I'd say I'm an entertainer, man. I don't really like to label myself. Mm. Um, I like to dabble in many different things. I like to do photography, music. Um, I started YouTube recently because you know I'm on the fitness thing. Come on. And yeah, man, anything creative, I'm, I'm involved. I'm okay. Involved. Is that full time? <clears throat> no, I have to have a job in that. You can edit that. Out, you know <laughs> <laughs> I have a job in that. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry, man. Real life is real. Yeah. Rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's real rap, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, that's good, man. All right, so talking about on socials, I know your following's gone up as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. 23.3. Oh, right, the exact yeah. number in that. I'll do my yeah. research. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I know that's gone up, yeah, that's, which is yeah, good. Peter, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, basically, that's a funny story. So, yeah. I think I was on maybe about 2000 in 20, end of 2019 to 2020. And funny enough, my brother that's here now, Tristan, we was going to go Napa. Mm. So me, Tristan, and the teeth that's here now. And um, lockdown, like the COVID situation started going mad. Yeah. So the trip got cancelled and I had spare money, right? So I was like, do you know what? Let me see what happens if I run these ads in different countries. So I was, because I was just focusing on England. Yeah. And um, my sound at the time, mm, I don't think England was taking to it very much. So I was getting people fucking with me, but, you know, not as much as I think they should. Um, so I said, you know what, let me experiment with this money that I've got and let me run some ads abroad, Germany, Italy, all these places, right? And I had a song called Respect and it kicked off. Nice. Right, so it kicked off now and then all these countries, South Africa, Italy, Germany, um, they just started fucking with it, right? So then it opened my mind to think, right, the world is a big place, bro. Why am I just focusing on England? Mm. Like, these people still have souls, bro. They still eat, sleep and shit like we do. Why am I just focusing here? Yeah. So I started targeting my audience over there and I was looking at my Spotify analytics and I've seen it. I was having a little bit of listeners from different places. So I targeted that and then that's when I just started getting the followers and shit. So that's basically how that happened. That's nice, yeah. That's a yeah. good way to look at it. Do you think yeah. other artists are kind of missing out on that and not, not thinking, you know, the wide spectrum that you thought? Yeah, yeah. I think, and I could be wrong, I think it's a lot of ego in it right now. I think people mm. like to want to know that they can walk on the road and say, oh, you're blah, blah. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? I think they want that feeling of being known in their area when it's just like, I see it more like a business. I'm like, look, if I can build an audience over there and I can build a fan base and then monetize that fan base potentially in the future, mm. why do I need to be recognized to feed my ego? Yeah. It's a business at the end of the day. When you're an artist, you're a small business. So you need to go where the love is. Wherever the love is, you need to go there. Yeah. And right now, because of the internet, you don't need to have your audience in your country. You can have it wherever. So that's, how basic, that's basically how I saw it. No, it's true. So, it's true. Yeah. No, I think it's better that way, yeah. definitely. Um, you used to be in an A&R. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Can you talk a bit more about that? So basically, when Urban Maestro split, like I've mm. always had an eye, an eye, an ear for talent, I believe anyway. Um, and at the time, I thought, you know what, that might be my calling to be an A and R. So I was trying to do that for a long time, and then I ended up managing my boy Cardo that I was in Urban Maestro with. Mm. And yeah, because I just saw. Nah, this guy's a fucking genius, bro. Why are you just, why are you not out there? Why are you not much further than you should be? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I thought, all right, I want to be an A&R. A&R is not that different from a manager to a degree. Let me just do both and then we rock together. And then that's how that, that happened. Nice. Were you doing that independently then? Yeah, just yeah. on my own, man. Just <laughs> on my own. So what, what was your experience from that? Was that something you liked or...? Do you know what? I realised I didn't have a passion for being a manager. I had a passion for wanting my boy to make it. Mm. That was my actual passion. Um, yeah, so it was cool. It was cool because I discovered a lot, of pe like, a lot of people and then they ended up becoming something. One that comes to mind is Young Fug. Like I discovered Young Fug from early, so, early. Because I would research <laughs> who's popping, who's hot. And I would listen, and then I knew that this brother had something different, do you know what I mean? But mm. yeah, so there's other artists, but none, I can't think right now, but, but I know Young Fog was. So how did right? you find them, sir? Um, I just Googled, bro. I just Googled who's hot right now, yeah. coming up in America. And it was this blog, this random blog that had like 20 rappers that you need to look out for. Oh, and wow. I just went on each of them and listened to their catalogue. So I would just go and um, they recommended. I'm just going to name Young Shugzy, that's not an artist, but mm. I would go on um, YouTube Young Shugzy, go on his music and be like, okay, cool, I see what they're saying. And that's basically how um, I discovered Young Fog. Nice, nice. Well, not discovered, I don't want to say <laughs> I found it, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You should have signed him. Yeah. <laughs> he was long gone before them, bro. <laughs> no, mm. fair enough. Uh, and you got a website as well? Do I? Do you not? No, not yet. 
You don't? Nah. <laughs> you mean a merch website? I think there was a website in your bio. Nah, not yet. No? Nah? Caught me out. I or broadcast channel? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's new. That's a new feature. <clears throat> okay. The broadcast channel. That is sick because that's basically like you having a mailing list through Instagram. So like, nice. if people aren't aware, a mailing list is very powerful because Instagram, you are basically renting the platform. Right, and at any time, if Instagram shuts down, then my twenty-three k is gone. Right. Mm. So, for example, when you have a mailing list, let's just say you got shows and shit. Right now, we're in the era where it's information. Information is powerful. So you want to grab people's email addresses so you have direct contact. Mm. So if anything was to shut down, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, you still have contact with your audience that you built. However, right now. Imagine me trying to get 20,000 people's email address, bro. That's hard. So again, I'm still renting the platform, but this new feature is still sick because if you get thousands of people on your broadcast channel, you can send one message in that group to all those people. You can mm. send if you want merch, you, you can send if you've got a show coming up, behind the scenes, exclusives, all of that, like it's a powerful feature still. That's quite clever. Yeah. 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 So you can use that broadcast channel as a mailing list. Do you know okay, right, yeah, yeah, to, to yeah, your followers. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you still have to subscribe to that mailing list, isn't it? To just click join. Yeah. You just click join. Because I was using MailChimp at the time and I'm having to like message these people saying, oh, yo, can I get your email address? Why do you want my email address? Like, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. yeah, a lot of artists, comedians, or whatever at their shows, they'll have someone at the desk and they'll just take email addresses down. Mm. So when they got new merch and tours and whatever, direct contact. Nice. But emails don't have as high as an open rate as the broadcast channel. The broadcast channel has almost like a, it's like a 70, 80% open rate. Whereas an Serious. email, I think it's like 50. Gone off the, I think gone off the top here, but I think it's like 50%. No, I agree with you. Yeah. So it's cool, man. It's cool. Obviously, you look at email and you just think spam, innit? Right? Spam. <laughs> Do you know what well, I'm I'll come back yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, fair yeah. enough. Um, you used to be called J Dreddy. Oh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to be called J Dreddy, man. That was nothing long, soldier days. Um, stands for just Dreddy. Okay, okay, okay. Just me, man. So, yeah. But I'm sure your dreads has grown, grown a bit more since then, isn't it? Y y do you know what? They would be down there if I didn't cut them. But oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think they've been, been this length before, but I just trim them. Shit. But yeah, man. Just oh, Dreddy, that's yeah. that <laughs> How long have you been growing your dreads? 20 years, you know. I've had my dreads for about 20 plus years, you know. Oh. A long time, man. It's a part of me now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like Samson, if I was to cut, then I'll lose everything. Just lose your strength. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to go back yeah, to the yeah. bar, innit? Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Nah, fair enough. Um, and photography. You yeah. do photography now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, do you know what? Shouts to my boy D6, man. He inspired me to do that because mm. he's, he's a gifted guy, man. Like, he's just sick at anything creative he, he, he touches. So I remember that he was doing the photography thing on his Instagram for a while. Um, I think he had a blog as well. Pretty sure he had a blog. And then um, one day he said, oh, yo, can you come on a shoot with me? And just helped me with some, um, some photography. Mm. I just rated his thing here. Yeah, so I just thought, oh, I want to try that, you know, because I think I have an eye for a good shot. Mm. And then from then, I just started using um, the iPhone. I was just using my iPhone to take shots, bro. And I started to, oh, this thing is giving me pins and needles. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, iPhoneography, that was a thing back then. <laughs> and um, yeah, I started with that. And that little iPhone got me places, bro. Like, well, you can do that much from an iPhone. Bro, the iPhone's powerful. Yeah. iPhone's powerful, you know. But is this like a it. newer iPhone or, or any of them? At the time, it was like a, a 11. Yeah. Like an iPhone 10 or 11, I just bought a little tripod. And I started doing my thing there. And people were liking my shots. And then, um, how did I get the... There was something going on in Camden. Young Fog was there. Oh, wow. um, he was in England at the time. And then I rolled up to the pop-up shop. And his stylist was there. I didn't know it was a stylist at the time, but I had my, my little tripod. Yeah. And I said, yo, like... Can, can, can man jump in? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a photographer. Yeah. He's like, yeah, all right, cool, come in. So now I'm in nice. the pop-up shop. Ian Connor's there. I don't know if you know Ian Connor. No. Like a fashion dude. Ian Connor's there. 
Young Fox Stylus is there, and I'm with Cardo. I'm like, bro, we actually got in, yeah? <laughs> so it was a two day thing, and I think yeah. Fog was coming the next day. So yeah. I was taking shots and shit. And then the next day, I come back, and then um, Fog pulls up, I get some shots for Fog and Gunner. This was before Gunner Boss. Mm. So yeah, um, still got the DMs with Gunner where I've sent him the pictures, and he's just like, yeah, okay, 100 when I'm back, red to tear. But obviously he's gone now. But <laughs> yeah, man, I got some cool moments with the iPhone and went from the iPhone, bought a little digital camera. And then um, I just started hitting up influencers because mm. I thought my shots were sick, thought they were good enough. And then slowly they just started replying. Um, and yeah, just started doing shoots from there, man. Um, it's not as much now because the music took over, but nice. photography is a passion, man. Do you love oh, that's good, yeah, yeah. And you got a page for that as well, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Beautiful dot shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you worked with any um, any collabs with Insta people or? Oh, with, uh, uh, with beautiful photography. Yeah, I worked with Rykard. He was on Love Island for, um, a few years ago. Jade Larice, she's like an influencer. Mm. Um, Nush, Nush Cope. She's like an influencer as well. Um, Paisley, she was on Tattoo Fixes. But I know Paisley though, but still. Oh yeah. Um, who else comes? Shocker, Double S. I took shots of them. Off the top of my head, I can't think who else now. Um, but yeah, the ones that come to mind. No, nah, fair enough. Um, so going back to your work, what's your, what's your latest single? The latest That's one is released. The Voice. Yep, the yep. voice, the voice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and and nice. you shot something today, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> Can you tell us today. about that or not yet? Not yet. <laughs> no? Not yet, not yet, not yet. Got the genius editor there right <laughs> now. Getting me. Um, but yeah. Well, that's going to be a vibe still. It's a, little, it's a little different from coming from me, but I have to switch the style up sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah. Um, if you didn't do music and you didn't do photography, what would you do? Wow. That's a sick question for your fucking up. <laughs> um, something creative, I don't know. Yeah? That's, that's funny, I don't know why. Do you know what, it'll probably be something, something creative or in the fitness industry. I'd have to combine the two, creativity and fitness. Has, oh, is that going? Has fitness always been there then? That kind of passion? Or? Yes and no. I used to do Muay Thai. So I guess nice. from then, from school, I was doing it from then. Um, and my dad has always been into it. Like, he was a personal trainer, fireman. So I think it just rubbed off on me. Mm. And, um, <laughs> funny story, the reason why I got into, like, gym, yeah. I had a breakup with one girl. I was a bit chubby at the time. And, <laughs> and I thought, fuck it, yeah, I'm gonna get you back here. Yeah. Fuck it, man. So I'm gonna get this chick back here. Yeah. Come on. So I'm gonna drop the weight. My dumb ass, like, bro, she was with you when you was chubby. So, like, but anyway, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, once man gets ripped and now I'm gonna get her back. Didn't so, work. But do you know what? Yeah, <laughs> I thanked that girl because yeah. look at where I am now. Like, it's a big part of my life. Mm. And it started from some little teenage breakup, do you know what I mean? Trying to get her back. And I fell in love with it from there. She don't even know. But yeah. <laughs> She's gonna know now. Huh? She might know now. Maybe. That's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think a lot of men do that, you know. Mm. I think a lot of men do that. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. Andrew yeah. Tate flicks. Oh, that guy. <laughs> but it's a mistake, man. It's a mistake. It's not all about your physical and the looks, but you need to do that shit for you. But yeah. yeah, yeah what do you yeah. think of Andrew Tate while we're there? You see Andrew Tate, yeah? Yeah. I remember I, had a t I was tweeting about him years ago because he was in Big Brother and I was a fan of Big Brother. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was tweeting like, yeah, this guy's clued up, he gets it. Because he was talking about the show in, a, in, in the right way. Because Big Brother is a game. It's a game, whereas people were getting too invested in the show, thinking these people are their real friends. Mm -hmm. So I liked his take on that. So, but recently, it's like he says the right things and then the complete wrong things at the same mm. time. So it's like, bro, I fuck, when you're talk I fuck with you when you're talking about this. But then he would just go left. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, bro, why did you have to say that? Yeah. Like, I can't lie. I think he could potentially be dangerous for the young ones. 
because oh. they don't know how to cop. Let me not try to use that word. They don't, thank you, my bro. <laughs> right? To take the good from the bad, they're just going to take in as, as a whole. As it is, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I think you need a bit more life experience and wisdom to be able to say, nah, that's bullshit. That I can fuck with. When he's talking about the Matrix and life in general, I fuck with it. Mm. Yeah, I think he's a bit too, he's a bit too mad on that end. Yeah. yeah. And that's for me. Them I know how I am. But that's for me. <laughs> so that's a shock, like. Right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No, no, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're talking about the Matrix and that, would you, I mean, did you ever see yourself kind of thinking, you know, I just want to do a nine to five? Hell no. Mm. Hell no. So in my head, yeah, I'm like, I have a path, you're going to struggle. Like, if I'm in the Matrix, I'm going to hate my life and struggle. If I choose what I want to do, I'm going to struggle. So why not choose the dream? Because mm. if I'm successful in that, at least at the end of the road, I'll be happy. But I'll never be happy in the other route. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, kudos to the people that can do that. But I just know in my heart that could never be me. I'll always try. Even if I'm 60, I'm going to keep trying. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to try something. Mm. I can't just be in the rat race, rat race and just live on nine to five for the rest of my life, man. I'm too creative for that. I think we all have too much talent to be able to just settle, but there needs to be the people that want to work and there needs to be the people that want to create and be entrepreneurs. Mm. There's no up without down. So you need both, but I'm just not that person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I read that. But what, what made you get into music? Cool. Um, there, was, there was three instances. Mm. And these people don't even know that they were that integral in the path that I'm on now. So obviously, you know, I was A&R slash manager for Cardo, but I still dabbled in music. So mm. I would like still drop verses on tunes here and there. And I remember like one instance, my uncle, he was a, he was a lawyer and he was just giving me advice on how to be a sick manager. And then mid conversation, he just goes, why don't you do music? If you, if you came out now with your flow, you'd mash up the place. You know, uncle's talk. You'd mash up the place. Because like <laughs> yeah, yeah. he heard a freestyle that I did over Otis with Blinks nice. years ago. And I'm like, right, this guy's still caught up on that freestyle. Yeah. Mad. So I'm just like, nah, nah, uncle. So I'm just the guy behind the scenes kind of thing. I'm like, all right, cool. Second instance was a guy I used to run with named James, 43 Frames. Shout out to him, man. Um, we were come back, coming back from a show that Cardo was doing. And in the car, he was playing one of the songs that I did a feature with Cardo with. I think it was called Averick's Hoodie. And then he's listening to the tune and my part comes on and he stops. And then I just go like, oh, is man not feeling my verse or something? And he stops and he just mm -hmm. goes, why does this guy not have a mic in his hand? And I could see the genuine frustration in his face. Yeah. And I thought, fuck, you know, this guy sees something in me that I don't see in myself, bro. Mm. And I was like, cool, that was the second instance. I was like, all right, cool. And the third instance, um, I used to work with an organisation called XLP, uh, youth charity organisation. They've really, got the buses. Yeah. <laughs> and they had the studio yeah. in the back of the buses and that. Yeah. And the they were on my ride UK, actually. Were they? Yeah. Okay, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. So um, nice. they're so dope, man. They were integral in Urban Maestro as well. They got us a lot of shows which helped build our confidence and shit, but cool. big ups to them, man. I love can you, them. Can guys. you just tell us what they do briefly? Uh, so they are a youth charity organisation. So they help use, you know, stay out of the streets, etc. cetera. Um, Christian based. Mm. Um, I'm saying that now, I've got the big old magnum in the fucking... But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, they have cool things, man. Studios, after school clubs, at the time anyway. Yeah. And um, they used to have this car that was on Pimp My Ride UK. It was a police riot van that they pimped out. So, and they pimped it out and put a studio in the back. And they'd ride around different boroughs getting the kids to just record in the back and that. So it was keeping them productive. Because a lot of the times, the youth then when they finish school, they're just up to mischief and that. Yeah. So it was a way to just... Do you know what I'm saying? Distract them from that. So they are like, they've changed lives, bro. Shout out mm. to Ethan Bernard as well. Like he was integral in the come up. Um, 
yeah, man, just a, a good, positive figurehead in our life, do you know what I mean? Because mm. he was on the roads and changed his life around mad. But I digress. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was working with XLP and um, uh, where was I? Sorry. Um, this is your third situation that kind of helped you realise your music is... Yeah, 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 cool. And they had a lot of links with Universal Records, yeah. right? So they were like, oh, yeah, Reese, you, you want to be an A&R? We know, we know a guy at Universal. Nice. Maybe you can meet with him and talk with him, right? Um, this guy is signed Tinchy Strider and all of that before. So oh, I'm right. like, okay, cool. So this guy named Ben Scar. He's now Dave's manager. Okay, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's now Dave's manager, yeah. So I'm like... Okay, at the time, I'm like, all right, cool, 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 cool. So in my head, I'm like, I'm going to go there. I'm going to get that advice. And I'm going to pitch Cardo. And then he's going to go, get him on the phone. Now I'm going to sign him. And I'm going, righty-o. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking it's going to go like that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've gone there now. I've got there three hours early. I've got there three hours early, bro. Damn. Three hours early. I'm waiting in, in the park, just going over. I don't know what I'm going over, because I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. But I'm just sitting in the park now. I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Um, Get there now, big glass doors, knock on the glass doors now, yeah. There's a cool brother sitting there, bro. There's a cool brother, like, yeah, come in, my bro. Very casual. Yeah. Um, and he starts giving me advice about being an A&R. I'm like, I just want to pitch card, though, bro. I'm like, all right, cool. So he's like, do you have a website? Funny enough, he's like, do you know about AJ Tracy? This was before AJ was mm. really gone like that. And I was like, yeah, I know about AJ, because, you know, I'm on my A&R thing, so I'm like, yeah, I know about AJ yeah, Tracy. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you need to be doing that, bro. Look at AJ, da, 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 and he's just telling me, I'm like, right, this guy knows his thing, yeah. Mm. Obviously, he's an A and R, but it's yeah. like, okay, he's schooling me and that. And then um, I say, yo, can I show you the artist that I'm working with, yeah? So um, he goes, yeah, yeah, and put him on, man. And I put on a freestyle that me and Cardo did. It was like a back to back, so I was spitting as well. Nice. Yeah. And then I, he play, I play it, and he stops and he's just looking. He's just listening. And he turns and goes, why don't you rap? You're good, you should rap. He carries on talking about something else. <laughs> and I just thought, raw, like, again, do you know what I'm saying? These yeah. people are seeing something in me that I don't see in myself. Like, so it helped build my confidence in that. Mm. And then it wasn't at those times that I said, fuck it, I'm going to do music. It was like maybe a year, year and a half after I just thought about those times. I was like, do you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. And I don't get it twisted, I'm not fucking Stormzy or nothing, but I think I've done pretty well so far. And so I don't regret it, man. I think it was the right move. So that's how, that's what brought me into music, bro. Those three instances. So shout out to them. They were integral on where I am now, man. That's good, up to man. them. Yeah. yeah. Nice, man. Nice. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. It's yeah. good to have a story as well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't always, bro. I never thought I was the, nah, I'm a behind the scenes type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's what I thought. Because think about it. In Urban Maestro, yeah, mm. you go from just having to do one verse and you're done. That's me, yeah? I'm I done. Because yeah. Cardo, he's such a genius. He, like, he would make the beats and then a lot of the times he was making the hooks. I'd put a <laughs> hook here and there, but all I had to do was drop a verse, jump on stage and I'm out. And you oh, go from right. that to, yeah, it's all you. You've got to do your marketing. You've got to do the whole song. You've got to find the beats. you got to go to the studio. You've got to get the graphic design. You've got to mark... Um, uh, promote your video, yeah. you network, you've got to do everything on your own, you know what I'm saying? So it was like overwhelming. I tried it. When Urban Maestro first split, remember Let It Bang? With me, uh, I shot with um, Odo and Old Boy. Mm. Tried it, but at the time I just wasn't ready, bro. I wasn't ready, but yeah, I digress, sorry. <laughs> no, no, for real. Yeah. So do you think it's hard kind of starting out as an artist? <clears throat> yes and no. Mm. I mean, I think it depends on the type of person you are. There's people out there, yeah, like a Kanye West, that just have this delusional belief in themselves, bro, which is, I think you need to have that. They have this delusional belief that I am great and no matter what I do from the beginning is sick enough to be out there. And there's other people like myself that I feel you need to build the confidence. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm the type of person that needed to build my confidence. Like, Deep inside, I thought I had something, but I'm like, I just didn't have the confidence to put it out there. Mm. Whereas the Kanye West of the world, they'd be like, I made it so sick. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? That, that core self-belief, I don't think I had that straight away. I think I had to develop that. So yeah. to answer your question, it depends on the type of person it is. 
No, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Kanye, I've still watched documentaries. Kanye Genius, well. right? Yeah, definitely, Sick. definitely. But a lot Sick. of a lot of his confidence actually came from his mum. Mmm. Mm. 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 Like she was she was gassing him. Gas, man. gassing him. Yeah. And I think as a youth, you need that man. Like, mm. bro, my parents were sick, like were sick. They're here, but my parents are sick, man. I love them to bits. They they raised me well, and I'm proud of the man that they raised me to become. However, I think they're a bit old school. Yeah. So I think when it comes to like the creative thing, they just wanted me to be secure and safe. So they're like, look, you're doing your, your thing here, but you want like, they're thinking they're talking about pension and this and that. Yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not lit by the time I'm 60, <laughs> what have I done? I don't want to be rated, waiting on no pension. So they supported here and there, but I, I didn't get it like how a Kanye West got it, for example. And yeah. I think that could have boosted my confidence even more, do you know what I mean? But mm. there's no manual how to do the right thing with a kid, do you know what I mean? They're all winging it. No, that's and true. Think, and I think they did a brilliant job. Look yeah. at me. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, sorry, man. No, no, fair enough. I mean, that being said, I think, I think it is better sometimes getting ex external confirmation. You know, people who are not, not from your family telling you, you know, you're great, you should go for this. Because obviously sometimes when you hear it from your family, you're just like, you know, well, that's just my family saying that. You know what I mean? Mm. Or mm. it can have the opposite effect because like my pops, man, he, like, he was my hero. Mm. So, if my dad said something to me, it's fact. Especially at those young ages as a young man. Like, my dad said, the sky ain't blue. It's really purple, bro. Don't listen to him. I'm like, yeah, my dad said it's purple, bro. I'm going to school and I'm telling you the sky is purple. So, people like that, if they're giving you the... You're talented, Reese, from young. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? I think that is vital. Um, those, some, some of the words that my mum my and dad have said to me have stuck with me to this day. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? And some of the things I had to un unlearn. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Some yeah. of the things I don't think are best suited for the lifestyle that I want to live. But yeah. yeah. It's different times, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do yeah. think parents play a very, very, very important part mm. on the uh, direction of your life, bro. And because some people ain't as strong as you. Mm. Some people ain't as strong as you. Like, if a mother told their son, or their daughter, especially your daughter, oh, you're fat, you're not attractive. Just from young, do you mm. see what I'm saying? That can stick with her for life. Yeah. Even if she gets to a super fit stage, she can have body dysmorphia because her mum told her that she's fat or her mm. nose is big. So she's like, I've got a big nose. And do you know what I'm saying? It could be like so subconscious in your head. No, I'm so just, yeah. to me, I think it's in like a parent's role is integral. You have mm. to watch what you say because you could come home from work and you're just pissed off one day and you say something on a whim that sticks with your kid forever. Mm. They're not as strong as me per se that can gain knowledge and be like, nah, that's rubbishness. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully I answered the question. <laughs> no, you did, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, I agree with that, 100%. Yeah, man. So I do actually like your music. Do you? <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> but what, what genre would you say it is? Fucking hard to say, my bro. Because mm. I like to dabble in different genres. I love the boom bap, old school. Um, I like to dabble in, what well, at the time, a little bit of trap here and there, a little bit of pop. Um, what do you call it? r and I got a song called Dark Liquor. Like, I like <laughs> to dabble, bro. I like to dabble. Whatever I feel at the time sounds sick, I'm putting it out. So mm. I know that might be, not detrimental, but it might be able to, it might confuse the audience because they're like, he does this, he does that, but that's me. That's yeah. Reese Miller, do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, that, that helps when you're, you're reaching out to the world, you know what I mean? However, let's just say you've got someone who likes Boom Bap and then I release a pop song. Mm. It's like, what's he doing? But Sorry, I man. don't care. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I think it's sick, so it's sick, isn't it? No, yeah, no, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was going to ask who's your target audience, but I think you kind of answered that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not yeah, sure? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I put it out. And whoever's fucking with me as a whole, the good, bad, the good, the bad, the ugly, then boy, part of the pack, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Right. Um, talking about live loud. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've seen that quite a lot. You know, hashtag loud. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, loud pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, where does loud come from? Where, what does that mean to you? So live out, shine, unite, dream. Mm. Live loud. I got that shit tatted on me. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this means doing what you're passionate about in life. Yeah. If you're doing what you're passionate about in life, then you're living loud. 
That's how I see it, man. So if you, if I say shouts to the pack, part of the love pack, you're like you right now. You're interviewing. I'm sure you enjoy it. Mm. Um, you're living loud. My boy over there is into fitness. He's living loud. My okay. boy over here, he's an actor. That's my brother from day one. He's living loud. So mm. if you're doing what you're passionate in life, you're living loud. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're part of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way. Yeah, it's a good way of thinking mm. about it. Still, that's nice. Does it pick up people on the back as well? That's sick, though. A, a bit, innit? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. But that's sick, though, because, like... Yeah. It's actually Carlos sent it to me. It's a plug-in, and it isolates the voice and gets to the back. He told me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Told you, he's the guy, man. Told you, told you, look. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Where the hell does Carlos get his stuff from, bro? Like, is he just so locked in, he just no. on, online all the time? Or? He is Dumbledore. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Like, he's, I just see, imagine him with a white coat on, and he's just, I've got this new thing, and it's... Bro, everything he does is clean. It's just sick. It's genius level, bro. You and him should link up, you know, Nati. I'm telling you, you and Carter would do a madness because you're a genius. Two geniuses together is just mm. crazy. Uh, so, Jim, yeah. are, you, are you into gym quite a lot now at the moment? Heavy. Yeah? Heavy, heavy. How many, how many heavy. times a week? All right, so it's between four and six. Damn. Yeah, between four and six. If I can make the six, it's six. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that Monday to Saturday? Sun, no, Sunday it depends off? on the, you know, the work and the shift and the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I love it, man. Okay, how many how many hours in the gym? Two and a half to three a day. Yeah. What the hell are you doing in there? Yeah. <laughs> weights and cardio, man. Yeah. All right, so talk talk me through like uh, what weights first or cardio first? I should charge people for this, yeah, man. <laughs> but um, you'll get some clients, man. That's cool. <laughs> I split. I split it. Yeah. So I like to do fifty minutes each session. But I split the 50 minutes of cardio. Mm. So I'll do five minutes to warm up, get the blood going on the... Should I tell the actual detail? Yeah, man. <laughs> Sorry, man. If you, if you become a PT, people come to you yeah, for yeah, more yeah. information. Five minutes on the cross trainer. Mm. Five minutes on the back. That's 10 minutes already. The blood's going. Okay. Weights. Warm up, yeah. Yeah. Then I'll do five minutes on the Stairmaster. And then weights again. And then 30 minutes on the running machine. Oh, so you're actually alternating time. between, between yeah. weights and cardio? So I'm constantly warm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because um, I don't want to just do 50 minutes and then weights. Mm. I like to split it up because I've still done the 50 minutes of cardio. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't like cardio. But I know I have to I do hear it. You, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have to. My body type, I have to, bro. Yeah. I look at a cookie, it's coming on. I'm the same, weight, I'm the, the same, yeah. flying on, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, gym's a passion, bro. I love gym. How, how long have you been going to the gym? Since the breakup thing. You know what I'm <laughs> Actually, I'm lying. No, before then, do you know what? My boy Samuel from school, yeah. um, he was like, yo, do you want to come to the gym? I was, I was 13. Oh. And it was Wavelength Gym. And um, yeah, I was like, yeah, fuck it. I want to get wham. Deptford? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. from 13, but I weren't serious. We weren't serious. Yeah. I remember one time we, <laughs> we was like, yeah, do you know what? We're going we're gonna to lose the weight, me and my boy. We were both chubby at the time. Yeah, you come in gym, yeah? All right, cool. We'll pull up to the gym. We get in the locker room and we sit there. And we're like, do you want to skip it today? We skipped it, sat outside the gym, got patty and cocoa bread and a nourishment. <laughs> and ate it outside the gym. The worst combination you could ever... <clears throat> a patty and cocoa bread and a nourishment. Starts and we're talking calves, the day yeah. before about how we're going to be on this gym thing. And yeah. we ate it outside the gym. <laughs> Didn't go, but yeah. So um, we wasn't serious, but... yeah. I don't think gym is a thing where you're serious straight away. I think it, you, you get into it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, since, since I was 13, nice. and serious after the instance with the girl. And from <laughs> then it just got serious, yeah. But do you feel like you, you understood everything in gym or do you feel like, you know, re recently you kind of understood, you know, this is what I actually need to do? No, nah, man, you, you learn as you go along. Mm. Um, you first go there, you're just kind of dabbling and winging it. And then, you know, you go to YouTube, you go to the people that give you the shit advice, you try that, you fuck up. Um, like, you're guaranteed to fuck up at least once or twice, bro. Do you mm. know what I mean? Um, yeah. I've gone on, like, when the first thing with the breakup with the girl, I did too much cardio and I just got sucked, bro. Like, I got skinny, I lost all the muscle. Mm. Um, because I wasn't aware of protein intake. You're still meant to be lifting heavy while you're in a caloric deficit. Yep. All these things I wasn't aware of. But you learn. You have to go through these stages to actually get the knowledge to improve. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah. It's a, it's a lifelong journey because you're always learning. There's no Don that's a master at the gym. I don't care what these influencers say, bro. There's no master at the gym. Yeah. You're always learning. Yeah, definitely. PTs are learning. Influencers are learning. I'm still learning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you've got to learn your own body as well. Yeah. yeah. And there's no one that you can't learn from. Don't ever look at someone's physique or whatever and think, I can't learn from them. There might be a Don that was a cyclist and he can help you on certain tips when it comes to cardio, how, he, how he, he works on his endurance. Then there could be a brother that's super wham, that help, he could teach you how he ended up being able to lift what he lifts. Like there's no person that you can't learn from. Everyone's got their angle that they, they might be better at you at. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, um, definitely. Yeah. All right, so yeah. in, your, in your latest single, The Voice, yeah? Yeah. We said, I was a fat kid with big dreams and charisma. Yeah. <laughs> Bubble, what was it? Bubble gum and bubble butts. And bubble butts. I was, I was into. into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, at that time, yeah, when I, when I was a fat you, I yeah. was still slightly confident when the things. I can't lie. And at that age, all I cared about was music and pussy in that order. <laughs> That's all I cared about. Yeah. Bars and going to bars to get girls. That's it. That's fair enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Music yeah. and girls. You ever rap to a girl? Rap to a girl. Nah. <laughs> nah, nah. Or nah, sing. Nah. Sing me sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're laughing. <laughs> Re sing. Nah, nah, nah. nah. That's not happening. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. What have you? Nah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was you. <laughs> nah, my, my, my friend's uni, uh, he, he had a friend who used to sing, like serenade a girl, bro. Panty dropper. Is, it? is that what it's called? No, nah, I'm asking you, is it a panty dropper? It was his girlfriend. Oh, okay, so, so it was, yeah. Okay. But she was into it, so. Okay, I, I'm always saying song. that. <laughs> yeah, 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 so I can sing, but hold a note, but I'm not the type to be singing to a girl. No, no, no fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> can we expect more gym content then on the Insta? Yeah, man, um, started a YouTube channel. Nice, it's yeah. It's like another um, outlet to just express myself. Um, it's like kind of vlog style. Uh, yeah, I just give advice. I talk about different topics while I'm working out. Mm. Just started it, so I'm just trying to build it up and that. But yeah, man. You, yeah. you done YouTube before or? Nah. Oh, I mean, only for music, of course. Yeah, yeah. only for music. Never yeah. done it for like gym or anything else like that. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's good, man. That's yeah, good, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with the body, you had a body transformation then, would you say? Or? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I've had a few though, but my latest one I put online. But um, lockdown. <sighs> Jesus. Was lockdown good for you? No, it finished me. That was bad. Absolutely. Okay. Finished me, bro. Yeah, like I got bare fat. Yeah. Because I wasn't used to that. Like, I'm used to having access to a gym. Mm. So when they're saying gyms are closed, I, I just didn't know how to function after that. Like, I just thought, fuck it at that point. Um, and yeah, I ended up gaining bare weight, man. How much you put on? Uh, probably about 35 pounds, 40 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Kilograms, that's maybe about 15 kg, 10, 15 kg. It's quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot, bro. Yeah. A lot. But I always knew, like, I have this thing in me that I knew, like, it's not staying on. Yeah. I knew once the gyms are open, I'll get it together. That's so, good, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> I'd done it before. Oh, okay, I so see. You know how. Yeah, yeah. This is what I say to people, like, it's a skill set to be able to lose weight. That's a skill set. Like, having mm. a, um, knowing another language. All of that is the same thing. Because if you go to the average person on the road and you tell them, yeah, go and drop 10 pounds, go on a cut, do this, lose body fat and keep your muscle, they wouldn't really know how to do that. Mm. So I'm saying when you develop that skill, that's a good thing in your arsenal to have. So when situations like that happen, you know how to rectify it. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. not having to then go on YouTube and scramble and how do I do this? You know it, you've done it before. Do you know what I mean? It's that muscle memory. So talking about the gym, do you think that your body has to reach a certain stage or yeah, before or a certain look before you can start posting content? Oh, that's a sick question. Um, yeah. Yeah? In, today, in today's society, yeah. I think the standards have gone through the roof, um, but we don't have to. Um, a lot of the people that are influencers now, you don't know what they're doing and what they're taking and what angles they're doing because mm. a lot of shit is lighting. A lot of these men are taking drugs and they're posting that they're natural. 
So you feel this pressure to have to look a certain way. So I kind of want to flip that, like, don't get me wrong, I feel like I look good, but to the standards that are out there, people would say, no, no, you don't, but I don't care. I'm showing an example of a natural good physique, do you know what I mean? Um, this is a realistic goal that you can hit. Now, a lot of things come down to your genetics as well. I feel like I have really good genetics, mm. so that plays a part in it. So to answer your question, yeah, there's a pressure, man. Um, even me, I feel like, mm, should I post this? Do I, look, do I look good enough to post this? Are people going to recognise that this is a good physique? But I just think, fuck it, man, I think I look good. So, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but to answer your question, yeah. Yeah. I think you do need to look a certain way, but I'm trying to fight against that. I think as long as you are <coughs> above average, yeah. someone's going to look at you like, okay, cool, that's attainable. Let me follow this guy. There are influencers out there that are overweight. Yeah. Because if you think about it, their influence is to other people that are overweight. If this guy's trying, I can try. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, yes and no. Kind of went back on my question there. Yes and no. But for me, I know I want to look a certain way. Do you know what I mean? But there's, that's not to say that if you're overweight, you can't be an influencer. So it's about Do kind of think? confidence in yourself. Confidence in yourself, man. Because I can't lie, I've seen a couple of gym people and they're not they're not up to gym standard, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they but they 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 post. Yeah. But what's gym standard? That's subjective, mm. right? Mm. So it goes back. Gym standard is subjective. True. Because to the person that's bed bound, you know, then like my six hundred pound life, you have seen that. <laughs> Them brothers there, they'll look at that guy yeah. that's trying in the gym as raw. Well. I'd like to be able to just get to that stage to yeah. be able to go to the gym. So everyone's an influencer to someone. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? That's good. Yeah, it's a good yeah, way of looking at it still. So there's yeah. just levels to it. My level was just like, hi, I just want to... I'm obviously not Simeon Panda in the man, but... <laughs> do you know what I mean? I could always try, my bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so you say more, more gym, more girl? More gym, more girls? <laughs> yeah. Um, yes and no. Mm. So on the front end, you get a lot of sex. The front end, yeah? On the front end, you get a lot of sex, yeah? Mm. But... Um, if you ain't got no substance to you, that's all you're going to get. Mm. That's all you're going to get is, <laughs> is the sex. You need to have something else about you, bro. Because it's easy for a thing to get a gym guy. That's easy for them. Yeah. It's nothing. You can get that in 15 minutes. What else do you have about you? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? What else sets you apart from the other gym guy? You're just another in-shape guy. Yeah. So, yeah, on the front end, you get a lot of quick hookups and shit. Mm. But... You need more to you, man. Yeah, some substance. You need more to you, bro. Yeah. All right, so what's, what's your background, by the way? Jamaican? Yeah, Jamaica, bro. Jamaican heritage, yeah? Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like <laughs> somewhere down the line, I'm going to hear <laughs> so I don't know, bro, because people will just come up to me and just like start speaking Ghanaian. So, or ask, are you Ghanaian? And I was like, no, I'm Jamaican. You don't see the dreads. Bro, I don't know what it is about me, but I fuck with it all from Africa anyway, man. I, I take mm. it as a... Compliment, I don't mind. Yeah. You know I mean, but Jamaican, yeah. No, he used to live true. there. Serious? When? See, it's done. You told me it's the last all week. <laughs> I'm buying another one today. See what he's got me on. But anyway, um Jamaicans don't don't take that. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, um what's the question? Um you said you used to live in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. So I was born here mm. and I lived in Jamaica briefly. Um, had a Jamaican accent and all of that, man. Um what, what age what, do you remember? I remember Just vaguely, roughly. maybe from a, maybe two to about four. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so right. About four or five. Um, and I was back and forth there a lot. Went to school out there briefly. Nice, yeah. Yeah. Did you get um, whooped? Do you remember? Yeah, they, they beat your ass, bro. Oh, no. Like, yeah. Jamaica, school <laughs> in Jamaica is not even fair. Like, if one person's bad, you're all getting licks. <laughs> all of you. They're lining all of you up <clears throat> to get licks. With the cane, right? Uh, a ruler. A ruler? So they tell you hold your hand out and mm. slap you with the ruler. Damn. I had fights in Jamaica, all of that, man. I was, I used to love fighting, bro. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't having it. Yeah, I, I guess, one, yeah. I remember one time, because I like dumpling, innit? I like boiled dumpling. <laughs> and lunchtime was coming. This is what I'm saying. I'm a, I, I'm a, I've been a foodie all my life. So I remember they said it's soup on boiled dumpling. So I'm like, oh, sick. So I've got my bowl now. And you know, you drink the soup and you save the best for last year. And at the time, this nine-year-old comes over. And at the time, a nine-year-old is big. Mm. Oh, he's the nine-year-old or whatever, right? 
and I'm just the British you. Yeah. And I'm saving it. And he comes over. And you know when them people have the dirt underneath their nails? And <sighs> yeah. He comes and he puts a hand on my dumpling, man. <laughs> Brother, I got up, I banged him in the face. And they were... Sh- like... Because I didn't give a fuck, right? I was just fighting from young. They were like, this brother just banged a nine-year-old in the face. <laughs> and what age are you? Maybe five. Damn. Five. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, don't fuck with him, you know, I'm an English boy. And I was just like, yeah, I was, okay, touch my butt, you crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was just rowdy from early, bro, but they'd fuck you up for shit you didn't even do. Yeah. It's like, I think they took pleasure in that. Damn. I'm being serious. They took pleasure in fucking what? <laughs> like, there was this one, there was this one instance, there was a disabled guy in the school and um, some other kids were taking the piss out of the disabled guy and um, the teachers overheard it. They didn't see, but they overheard it and they said, who said that? And mm. he went, it was Reese. Damn. Bruv, they took me into the office and fucked me up. I'm like, bro, it was them. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but I didn't yeah. have a leg to stand on. They just wanted to fuck someone up, bro. Do you know what I mean? But Damn. that's how it was when I was there anyway. Yeah. I even yeah. had a graduation and that. It was a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back on it now, now it was hell, but I lived in a village. Nice. Yeah. Do you remember where? Uh, Manchester, a place called Manchester. Oh, what country is that? Yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. Come on. My, mom. My mum. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. 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 Red, Manchester. Yeah, Redbury, Porous. Yeah, that shit, area. Uh, St. Chris, Christiana as oh, well. Shit. Christiana Spaulding's. Oh, you, are you well. Jamaican? Mm-hmm. Oh, wicked. Yeah. My brother. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Little village, bro. I yeah. love it because I got to see real poverty, bro. Yeah. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? So the contrast was mad. Like, luckily, where I was living was quite fortunate. Like, it was a big house, but it was one of those villages where across the road you're seeing the tin foil hut thing. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I saw that. We're cutting the chicken's head off. We're eating eggs from the chicken. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Proper things, bro. Straight from the source. Yeah, Straight 100%. from the source. Like, At all. Yeah. <laughs> Wild yeah. dogs running about. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that experience. So now, yeah, you know where your food comes from. Now I don't. <laughs> now you don't. Yeah. Now I don't. Now it's now. just some farming and you don't know what I'm doing. Where chicken, it's coming yeah. from. Whereas in Jamaica, I know Ed laid that chicken. You name the chicken, whatever. <laughs> laid that chicken, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean the egg. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's the chicken you're eating tonight. Right, yeah, you know, yeah, do you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Well, my granddad killed a pig once. That was nuts to see. How yeah. you kill it? So they surrounded the pig. <laughs> Mad, didn't it? I'm thinking, <laughs> fuck, you know, poor pig. And they're cutting the pig as he's trying to run around and that, like, nuts. Heads? Neck or? They were just slicing the pig, poor oh, thing. Oh, they just... <laughs> Brother. <laughs> I'm just saying, cut there. The pig's squealing. Cut there. I'm like, fuck it. Now. And it makes a noise, isn't it? Yeah, squealing yeah. and that. Yeah, I've heard it. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken was a bit more calm because it's like head off and the body's still running and that bucket in it. You put a bucket. Yeah, bro. Oh, you know. Yeah, I know, I know what to yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, it's mad because the head's off and the chicken's still It'll running run, about. Yeah, yeah. So how is it doing this? But I think it's like the body just reacted, isn't it? Yeah. Can you imagine the, the viciousness in it. Yeah. As a young child, you're seeing them surround this pig and chop it up, <laughs> brother, <laughs> brother. <laughs> And then, and then you have to wait, and then you have to eat that. You have to eat what I you just saw. I didn't care at the time. It tastes good, man. <laughs> you didn't care, no. I didn't care at the time. But <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. That's why you don't name them animals, man. Huh? That's why you don't name them Ed. That's true, innit? Because <laughs> now you have now to kill Ed. Like, at the time, I, I didn't care. Yeah, fair enough. At you just time, wanted the food. Yeah, I didn't care, bro. Because <laughs> I don't think I registered that, yo, you're eating what he just killed. Yeah, yeah. Just, I'm just hungry. Give me the food. <laughs> hey, I'm not registering that at that age. But yeah, man, Jamaica. <laughs> Growing up there was, I think it made me more cultured. Mm. And a lot of the times when I feel like shit, I think back to when I saw the poverty, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I can think, do you know what? I am actually blessed. Yeah. To them, I am a Jaden Smith. I am the rich boy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? To them. So sometimes, yeah, it keeps me grounded a lot of the times, man, when I take shit for granted. Oh, 100%. It's very yeah, humbling, yeah. 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 Have you, have you been back recently or? Yeah, I went, I went like yeah. a mandem trip. But so last time I went was uh, two, two and a half months ago, three months ago. And it was the first time I went as a tourist. Because okay. I'd always gone there to see family. So this time I was a tourist. How many guys? Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, four, okay. Four. Did you go to Dreams? Nah. Oh. We went um, in Independence. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Independence. <laughs> yeah, nice. How was it? 
Yeah, it was sick, man. <laughs> <laughs> the smartest is it all, man. Yeah, it was sick, yeah. man. It was sick, sick. Um, are you religious? I'm enjoying this interview. Dear God. Because I see the ank. I know, I know real, my stuff, let yeah. Let me be real with yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. My mum gave this to me. Okay. I understand that it has like a spiritual meaning and I just know it brings good mm. faith and or if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I trust mumsy, bruv. Um, I don't know the ins and outs and the what it means to the detail, but I know it's something good for the spirit. Mm. I'd say I'm more spiritual than religious. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know you're religious, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, how, like, how did... Were you always Christian or? It's, it's your interview. I know, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, yeah, I've always been Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, like okay. My family, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was kind of raised into it, to be fair. Cop, cop, uh, cop, yeah, cop, yeah. cop, cop. Nah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's what's the W? Uh, I don't want to say my my name, but it's my. Oh, your surname. One of my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've okay, got a double cool. barreled name. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But, so with with religion, do you believe in a higher being or anything like that? Yeah. Or do you do you pray at all? Or? I meditate. Nice, yeah. So what, um, what, what does that mean, kind of just closing your eyes and... So there's different forms of meditation. Like yeah. The meditation that I would do is I would close my eyes and um, just try and think about nothing. And when these thoughts come into your head, you gently just let them go and bring it back to your breathing. Okay, right. So you'd focus on the breathing the and the silence. Yeah. And then you're going to have thoughts coming in, I need to do this, I need to do that, music, this, music, that, that's cool. Let the, let the thoughts come, but then mm. bring it back to your breathing again. Um, I've not been on it as much, but it's, it is powerful, man. And if you notice, a lot of the most successful people, they will tell you that they meditate. 100%. Yeah, so I just yeah. focus on what these guys are doing. They're saying it for a reason, bro. So, but yeah, I do, you reminded me, I do need to get on it. Like I have a a reminder on my phone every morning, meditate, meditate, meditate. I don't always follow it, yeah, yeah, yeah. but at least it's there. Yeah, it's reminding you, know I mean? you yeah. Mm. I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna yeah, try that. Yeah, yeah. My, head, my head's very clustered, I have a lot of thoughts, yeah. It helps, man, mm. it does help. I think we were talking about, <laughs> what's, what's your food after gym? I know it's a bit random. You're yeah. talking about fish and chips and... <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, <laughs> so... Are you not that strict or...? Yeah, so with me, <laughs> yeah, I like to have a balanced diet. Like, I'm not the guy that's just gonna be like, I'm just eating brown rice and chicken breast like bro i like pizza and fried chicken bro i'm having what i want um but during the I, week yeah 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 i'll have a cheat day where i'll go all out but during the week i try to have a balance because you need to make it a lifestyle change you, yeah. you want something that you can actually realistically stick to um so after gym i'll go through phases so right now my phases i like to have two pieces of fried chicken after the gym no chips because that's, you don't need the chips. Two pieces of fried chicken, and then I might have rice or, do you know what I mean? I'll just mix it up. I might have Snickers in there or whatever, yeah. but fruit, I just balance it. So as long as I'm having fruit, protein, carbs and whatever, but hey, you're talking about the fish, the fish story, innit? <laughs> oh, it's getting crazy. Yeah, yeah, I went out. Yeah. So went fish and chip shop, because funny enough, in the fish and chip shop that I go, they sell fried chicken. Okay, and their fried right, chicken yeah. is better than boss man's. Serious? Yeah, yeah. Damn. It's homemade. So I go in there and I was feeling a bit, I was like, do you know what? Let me get a piece of fish with that, yeah? Mm. Um, so two pieces of chicken, no chips, and just a piece of fish. Yeah. So I said, here he goes, 12 pounds. I said, Damn. what? Now I know like people here, like that's normal. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, how much is the deep. fish? Yeah. He said, nine pounds. Most people were like, yeah, that's normal. But Damn. I was like, what? That's without the chips. No chips, just two, two fries yeah. and a piece of uh, fish. Yeah, that's steep. Man, man said to me, 12 pounds. That's steep. Blimey. So put the fish back, boss, man. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Just, just the chicken today, yeah? Yeah, yeah let me not get spicy. <laughs> so how, how does that work with, with cutting down and, and gym? Do you just kind of make up with the cardio? Or? Calories in, calories out. So okay, I right. count my calories. So as long yeah. as I'm hitting the macros, you can pretty much have what you want and you will still lose weight. But it's best to um, have a nutritious, balanced diet. Because mm. I know if I don't, all right, this is Pete for the interview, but if I don't have certain foods, the yeah. bowel movement won't be as, <laughs> so I have to have Smooth. fruit <laughs> and the veg here and there, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. can't just have whatever I want. But realistically, you can have pizza every day and lose weight as long as you're in a caloric deficit. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend it because that's obviously not healthy. Do you know what I mean? 
No, that's true. The price of fish and chips have gone crazy. It's too crazy. much. Crazy. Too mm. much. Um, like, mm. People were saying that back, back in the day, £12 could feed a family of like two or three. Yeah, yeah. No way. Man said mm. £12 for me. And that's going, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. two pieces of chicken and a piece of fish, bro. It's true. It's, it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> crazy. So you, you got tax, yeah? Can you, can you explain them at all? Yeah. Are you into your tax? Have you got any plans to get more? Hummingbird. Rose. And it was my favourite it was my favourite bird when I was in Jamaica. Oh, so they had hummingbirds in Jamaica. And at the time, you Google might be wrong, but I was taught in school that it was the only bird that could fly backwards. I don't oh, know how true right. that is now. But I was just fascinated. I think they're just beautiful um, birds, amazing, bro. Yeah. So I said I always wanted to get that tattooed on me. The rose, my great grandma, that's like to remember her by um, Live Loud, obviously. Yeah. It's a man's yeah. thing. Music notes, dream big in Chinese. Got my dog on here that died. His name was King. Right. Microphone at the back. <laughs> Two here. Some of them are just because they look good. Yeah. Teardrops in the fingers <laughs> and that. Why, why do people get the skull? I've always wondered. I just like the skull, bro. This was a skull with an Afro comb in it. I thought it was different. <laughs> this looks cool, hard, bro. blood. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Some of them are just because they just look sick. Yeah. Some yeah. of them have meaning. The mum one, I was 18. And I just thought, yeah, I'm just going to get a first tattoo. She ain't going to be pissed off about that. Cause, it's got a name, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, oh, yeah. Fair enough. Do you, do you have a specific artist you go to? or Artist? Yeah, yeah. Nah. Well, my music taste is very eclectic, man. It ranges. It could be Coldplay and Keen to G-Unit and Young Fug, bro. Oh, sir. Yeah. Sorry, so I meant, I meant tattoo artist. Yeah, oh, yeah. tattoo artist. Yeah, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I got one guy in Peckham. Um, okay, he's, right. he's actually a bus driver, but Seriously? he used to have a shop. So sometimes you just open, like, if I book in, he'll just, like, he'll open up his shop, do the tattoo, go back to his nine to five. It's just like a hobby, pocket money for him. Yeah. So I just stick with him. That's good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he looks, yeah he's good. If he's yeah. good, he's good. So, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so talk, talking about music then, you were saying, um, what, what inspires you musically? You said artists. Um, you said Coldplay one day and 50 yeah. Cent another or something. Bruv, everyone inspires me, man. Like, my boy Latif could say something to me mm. and it could inspire a line or a song idea. Tristan could talk to me and he inspires me about his ideology about something. Odok can inspire me with his passion for videography and then I can t translate that into a song about, like I've got a song called Other Side about chasing dreams and all of that shit. So everyone around me can inspire me. Nice. Artist-wise, Kanye West is a big inspiration. J. Cole, um, Young Fug, funny enough. Like, I think he's top five, but that's another debate. But yeah, everyone, everyone. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's yeah, cool, yeah. definitely. Any future collabs you can look out for? Or any future products coming up? Uh, projects, sorry. So I've got this single that I've shot today, um, linked up with Nutty P. He's a dope producer. Um, I don't usually link up with producers. I usually stick with Cardo. Yeah. But this guy is gifted, man. Um, shout out to Nutty P. Um, I've done a couple international collabs, Italy, South Africa, Brazil. How uh, did that come about? They just heard my tunes. Cause remember I was saying I was running the ads from like abroad and that. Yeah. And they just fucked with my shit. So like a nice. couple of Brazilians have done like remixes to my tunes and that. Sick. Yeah. Um, I was going to do one in Russia, but you know how the whole Russia thing happened. So Jeez, yeah. it's a bit left. Bad, bad publicity. But, yeah, but they were like a... <laughs> A big part of my audience, <laughs> Russians oh, were fucking wow. with me heavy, bro. Seriously? So that was like a big chop. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I fuck with anyone that fucks with me. Yeah, so, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Keep it open. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, what, what are your thoughts on Ghana then? About the whole situation. Yeah, man. You bring up this question. Is you? <laughs> um, when you say thoughts, what do you mean? What do you think about it all? What do you think about Gunner as a... His music's sick. Yeah. What do you think about um, the situation? Okay. Did he snitch? Yeah. He did? Yeah, Straight yeah, up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> to me. But I don't know... I'm not a lawyer, bro. So I don't know the ins and outs and technicality. Mm. I'm not a road man. So I don't know. But to me, I heard you in the court saying, this is a gang. This is this. Is that snitching? Yeah. It is? To me. But I don't know nothing. I'm not a road man. Yeah. So to me... If there's a video of you saying that, yes, this guy is, um, it's a gang, yeah. is a gang or whatever, I'm like, oh boy, you road man tell me, I don't know if that's snitching or not, but to me it sounded like it, but I don't blame him. I'd be snitching. 
I don't blame you. You think I'm going to... You think I'm spending time for you lot? I'm trying to tour and fuck these chicks. <laughs> but yeah, like... I, like, bro, wouldn't you want to live your life? I don't understand. Yeah. Like, the only thing I disagree with Gunner is if you're... Now, you lot might be bigger Gunner fans than me. I know Odot is. But if you portray yourself to be a road man, mm. then I guess you have to stick by the code. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But really, it kind of comes down to what Fug says. If Fug says, no, nah, he didn't snitch, then he didn't snitch. That's how I see it. I hear you. Yeah. But to me, yeah, I guess so, man. Like, I don't blame him, though. I don't done the same thing. I don't live by that code. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a road <laughs> man, bro. I'm trying to be free. Yeah. Yeah, so... Good for him because he's doing it well, right? <laughs> Good for him. Look how he's, he's doing well. I will, he's still shelling out shows and all of that, bro. Yeah, yeah. And what's, what's your thoughts on his music then? He's good, man. He's a, he's a good artist. Um, I can't listen to Gunner constantly. Mm. Um, I need a variety, but he's good at what he does. Yeah. Um, cool melodies, um, catchy hooks, good beat choices. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't listen to him constantly, though. I'm not a fan. Like, I won't yeah. pay to go to a gunner show. But big ups to him. He's good. He's dope. No, nah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what are your goals for the next kind of couple of years? You know, what, what do you hope to achieve? What, what are you aiming for? Uh, just to build the audience, man. Build a more engaging audience and just continue to go where the love is, bro. Um, put out content that inspires me. Yeah, keep being creative and just follow my gut. It's got me this far. So that's my plans. I don't like to say I want to be on the billboard and do it. Bro, I'm just trying to create and put it out and whoever flocks to it, flocks to it. Yeah, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So I mean, would you do you feel like you made it in music or do you feel like there's a certain point where you, you turn around and go, look, look I've made it? Like, I made it already. I'll tell you why I made it already. Yeah. I was a guy that didn't have the confidence to do music. Mm. So the fact that I'm actively doing it, I'm already successful. Anything else is a bonus, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah 100%. Like, yeah. if I can't be grateful for what I have now, how can I be grateful for what's going to come? And I have to remind myself that. Mm. I have to remind myself that. Because sometimes I can watch other man's thing. I'm like, no, oh, man's thing's moving and da-da-da. It's normal. It's human, isn't it? Yeah. You're, like, you're, it's competition kind of thing. But I have to bring myself back to, bro, like, watch your thing. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm grateful now. It's a good way to look at it, yeah. definitely. Yeah. What, what are your vices? What's your, what's your, I know you're smoking that thing right now. But. No, no, this ain't <laughs> right. This is a one-day thing. Nice, though. That's for now, yeah? Girls, man, I love women, bro. Is it? I love women. I, I love them. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It can be both. It can be both, yeah. Oh, but you don't have no children? Nah. Okay, okay. Nah. <laughs> Not that you know of, no? Not that I know of, but I love them. And sometimes it can be a bit distracting. Do you know mm. what I mean? But women that's, women yeah. are enchanting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Love them. So, yeah. So, that's, that's your kind of advice. That's, your, that's how you, you know. That's the one that comes off the top of the head. Yeah. Um, I'd say I'm a pretty disciplined person. Um, no, would right. you agree, Teeth? Would you know? I'm a pretty disciplined person. Um, that's good but when it comes to the girl then, bro, just... <laughs> that's your weakness man. Me you're, you're really Samson then <laughs> <laughs> you're really Samson oh. with the long hair and Delilah yeah man <laughs> Tristan you with me don't leave me alone don't leave me yeah I'd say if that, yeah that's it man I love them oh, fair shout enough. out to all the women out there man yeah. with a beautiful woman yeah? beautiful. Come on, all man. of them so yeah. you gotta just be beautiful man all of them. Do, do you have a type then? Nah. So that's where the weakness comes from. Because you don't have a yeah, type. Yeah, because I have a broad type, bro. Yeah. Mm, not a broad type, but like... You can see the If beauty. I find you attractive, you're attractive. Like, mm. I could see a light-skinned girl with a beautiful gym physique. And then I could see like a goth chick that just has sex appeal, bro. Like, I don't care. If you're attractive to me, yeah. down. Because like, a lot of the things that people don't understand is like, you gotta be sexually compatible with someone as well. Like you can mm. get with someone that you view because there's no such thing as a 10 or an eight on, there's no such thing as that. But in your mind, you can get with the 10 and the sex could be rubbish. And then mm. you get with the six or the seven, you're like, that shit was lit. 
Do you see what I'm saying? Because <laughs> yeah. you're sexually compatible. Yeah. So it's not always about the looks. So, bro, it's like a gift and a curse that I have a bold type. Yeah. Because it's just like, oh, everyone I can... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. So with that being said, does is that, is that make it hard to settle down? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm open to it, though. Mm, the right one, yeah? yeah? Is there a right one? Do you is believe in marriage? Thing? Nah. No? Nah, I'm not getting married, bro. Never? I don't want to say never, but because, you know, people change. You're changing every day, but as of right yeah. now, nah. No plans, no. Don't see the point in bringing the government into your situation because that's essentially what you're doing. It's a contract. Don't see the point of it. And I watched that, um, I wouldn't say a documentary. Do you know Soft White Underbelly? Do you know yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched a uh, divorce attorney's views on marriage and I was already a bit iffy about it. And then mm. when I watched that, it just further made me think, nah, this ain't for me. Oh, um, for I'd recommend everybody to watch that. Like, eye opening. This is a divorce attorney's opinion on it. Yeah. And how he's just basically saying it doesn't work. That you have a mechanism that doesn't work 80 to 90% of the time. How would you do it? So, at the moment, nah, man. I just think, why can't you two just keep it you two? Mm. But I understand marriage to women means something, but I think that's because what they've been taught growing up. They're watching Cinderella, they're watching this, they're watching all these things. So they feel like it's more important than it is. So I understand that on a woman's behalf, but I can't see me getting married. Do you believe in any conspiracy theories? <laughs> yes. Yeah? Which ones? <sighs> Not ones in particular, but I believe that, that there's an agenda and there's a higher form of people that are controlling things and pushing certain narratives. L like Illuminati? No, nah, I don't believe in Illuminati. Um, you just feel like there's more? That there's an agenda. Us. There's mm. people at the top. There might be five people at the top that just control certain things and certain viewpoints that they want to push right now. Because I swear, you lot can correct me, I swear there's a Don that owns certain networks. Like, there's one Don that owns certain <coughs> news, bro. I, I can't remember. If it, huh? Yeah, Rupert It Murray. might be that, right? But yeah, so yeah, imagine yeah. one guy... He owns a lot of news stations, yeah. yeah. And look how powerful yeah. the news is. Mm -hmm. So one guy that could just have an opinion based off his upbringing, whatever he believes, can yeah. control the narrative of millions. So that alone is like... He's genius. You think he's, he's genius? He's a genius. You know why? Why? Because I might like the Sun and you might like the Telegraph. And it doesn't matter which one you buy. It, yeah, you're right. Because they're all making the money. It doesn't matter that yeah, they're right. against each other. It doesn't matter. So would you say he's an evil genius? Probably, yeah. Mm. He's a genius and he's rich. Yeah, he's he's, he's, like yeah man, he's, he's a genius. genius. You piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, is, why, why, is, why is he not an evil not genius? evil then. But. I think, like, as a society, we've, um, we've cate categorised and comparp com compartmentalised sins. So all the sins are equal, but humans aren't. So let's say, for example, I'll just give an example. If someone murdered someone, right, cold blood, would you say that person's evil? No, it depends on the situation. Right. But let's say, for example, someone was a liar and he scammed someone and that person killed themselves, the person that he scammed, is that person also a murderer as well? Yeah, technically, yeah. It's very situational, isn't it? Yeah. But this is why I tried to say, like, this yeah. person, you, you, you would view him as an evil person, but really he's just... I get doing, what you're saying. He's just doing something in a different way. And he just has more power. Precisely. Because he might not actually give a crap. He just he wants... Crap. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, okay, right, right. So, yeah. But yeah. then it comes down to um, ethics, right? And morals. And I just think, with that kind of power that you have, I would like to believe that these people at the top should have the ethics and morals that I do. And that's selfish. It's selfish, and, mm. but it is what it is. I just believe, bruv, let people decide for themselves. Don't brainwash people. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. who am I to say what's right and wrong, right? No, that's true. Yeah. I feel like I'm getting hot. Am I sweating on camera and that? Alright, calm. No, so you, got the, you got the hat, man. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, are you, are you, do you believe in the flat earth theory? No. And I'm looking right at you when I'm not. <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not a flat earther, no? No. Yeah, none none of that up. crap. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not. You, you believe it. the Earth's round, or you, or you just have no opinion? I'm gonna say I don't know. Mm. It could be a square. Does it matter? No. <laughs> no. <It's better>. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about any other conspiracy theories? Do you have any? Do you have any actually? You actually All right. Believe in? While we're here, let's talk about Russell Brand then. Ooh. Right. Okay. So that to me is a conspiracy, right? All right, so Russell Brand has yeah. a big YouTube channel. I think he's got like 6 million subscribers on that. Yeah, he's got a lot actually, yeah. A lot. So when you have that kind of attention and you're bringing awareness to what these people at the top are doing, you'd be surprised what they're doing, bro. So he's, he tra can he's trying to expose, isn't he? Expose yeah, yeah. it. And he's backing it up with receipts. Exactly. So this isn't just him talking. He's showing the receipts of what's going on. He's talking about like this COVID situation, all of that, and yeah. loads of other things, right? And then now all of a sudden, he's in this, oh, he's been a sexual abuser and this, that, and the other. Very convenient, right? Yeah. Very convenient. And you've got to think, the majority of people are not watching his channel. So they're taking what the news is saying mm -hmm. for face value. So this is why I say the guy's evil. Because it's like, most people ain't subscribing to Russell Brand. It's only 6 million people in the grand scheme of the world. There's not a lot of people. So the majority of people are going to see him that way. All mm. it takes is an allegation. Yep. All an allegation is someone saying you did something. Someone right now could say you did that. That's an allegation. But it's bigger because he's famous. It's on a ma massive platform. Uh, because, and yeah, because it's on the platform, yeah. And that has implications to your image. Mm -hmm. All it takes is one person to say you did something and people go, he might have, you know. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I think, so, I think it's the media station that it comes from as well. Yeah. Just you know what I'm saying? from some of the, the main news. A bit convenient that it's all coming out now that he's exposing you lot. Mm. But then it goes back to Latif's point. Yeah, like... <laughs> a lot of these so-called evil people created machines that save lives. Like, you know, do you know about Epstein? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, Epstein was sourcing girls to, like, all kinds of top top tier people mm -hmm. but some of these guys apparently prince allegedly andrew. huh prince andrew prince andrew but mm -hmm. a lot of these guys were uh, scientists or doctors like yep and you got to think that <laughs> these men probably weren't getting girls so they're doing that but at the same time they invented machines that save lives so it's just fucked because uh, do you know what i mean so it's like <clears throat> well where do they stand kind of thing <laughs> it's hard because you want to say something? Yeah, so I'll say two things. After this, after, after this, um, I don't want to be to say, but after this, I'm going to ask you guys with a question. Yeah. But then, yeah, the thing I wanted to say now is, um, with things like this, let's go back to Russell, what's his name? Brand. Russell Brand. Brand. Respect the name, Cuzzy. No, I know, I just want to make sure I got it, I got yeah, it correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very interesting because situations like this, right, I'll, I'll give another example. Let's say R. Kelly, right? I was going to bring him up. I was going to bring up R. Kelly, bro. He it's, took the it's words so, out of my mouth. It, it's, when I hear about these things, right, it's so interesting that, let's say, for example, Russell Brand, he, he is a very, very famous world-known person, worldwide known. Mm -hmm. So he would have known that these people at the top were doing these things from a long, long, long time ago. You're assuming because, though. You're assuming. But once, once you, but once you actually reach a certain but level, you have to say you're assuming. You don't know. Okay, fair, fair enough. But, but yeah, I on. assume allegedly. he allegedly yeah, he yeah, yeah. he would know about these things. He would he would have known about these things at some point because it's like <clears throat> put it this way: everyone has their own vices, as I was saying. Yeah. So once you reach a certain level as a celebrity, or you have a, your access, you have access to a certain amount of power. So a certain amount of influence, so a certain amount of knowledge, so a certain amount of circles that the average person can't get into. Mm. So a majority of these people, if not all, everyone in these, in these circles, they have their own vices. Some of them might take drugs, crack, all this other stuff. Some of them might um, have, be predators. Some mm. of these people might be murderers. Some mm. of these might be this or that. He would have been okay with it up until a certain point. And then I, I, I assume that now it's obviously a certain point where he's now starting to talk out about these things. They're like, okay, well, we have dirt on you too. So it's almost like it's very easy, it's very interesting to, to hear to say as soon as these allegations come out, they're now talking about all these things. But it's like they probably had the dirt on him from a long time ago. Mm. Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, 
they've had you can't I don't think it'll be music's so sick, bro. this is it this Sorry, is it great it will be Sorry. interesting to hear that R. Kelly who's been around for a long 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 time people knew he was a predator but it was only until this is it but it was only until recently this is it but it was, this is it they had a video of R. Kelly peeing on a girl this is it I think she's like, what, 14 years old? Can you imagine? Video. They That's played the video in court and he bust case. Because he's <laughs> sick. Don't get me wrong. He's, no, no. Because he's sick in both ways. Like, he's tapped, yeah? yeah? But can you think your music is that dope that they can put out a video of you pissing mm -hmm. on an underage girl and you drop I wish and people forget? Yeah, no, it's true. But I say the same thing. I'm like, when you look at Harvey Weinstein <laughs> and that, people are still watching his film, so shouldn't you stop watching that? Yeah, he's not. Acting. I still listen to. Like I can, I can separate the the artist from the. Yeah, then, what, what happens there? We're not meant to listen to R. Kelly no more. And he's written songs for other people. What about so happy people and happy birthday and all these. I'll, I'll put it on now. Please don't do that. I'll yeah, slap bro. it on right now. I play bro. every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we meant to yeah. do? Yeah. Because that don that's act, acting wholesome at your job mm. could be evil. He could be fucking his wife up at home. Hundred percent. Yeah. He like, could be doing the whole lot. Everyone likes to be on their high horse, like they're perfect, but everyone's got some dark in them somewhere. Like, think about it, yeah. I'll take The Rock as an example, yeah. Mm -hmm. He has a very clean public image. Yeah. But he could have characteristics that someone in this room thinks, you're a prick. Mm -hmm. You have to. You, no the one's rock. perfect. The rock's perfect, bro. <laughs> Are you <familiar laughs> with that? Someone could think, no, no, Dwayne's an arsehole. Yeah. I'm not saying he is, yeah. but there's going to be something that you do that doesn't vibe with someone else. So what is good and what is bad? That's so true. I hear it, I understand it, but then you can't cancel one person and then not cancel another because mm -hmm. that other person that you're not cancelling could be doing something dark. The Their thing is just in the public eye. The problem with that is, it's about what circles your friends in and, and who's going to betray you. Because I think everyone keeps tabs on everyone. When, you, when you're famous like that, it's like, I know what you do. I've probably been to your house if I'm yeah. famous and you're famous. And I'll keep tabs on you. And I, I, I guarantee there's, there's times when, you know, if you go against me now, I have this against you kind of thing. And That's I think, horrible. I think it's like that, really. My thing is, all right, so to go back to your point, mm. you're saying that... Um, at one point, he would have known. Russell Brown would have known, yeah? All right, so if that was you, you're an actor, right? Yep. And you blow up, would you expose these people? If it's in my best interest, yes. If not, no. So do you blame him then? No. Okay. Then this is, this, it goes back to what I was saying. So afterwards, I'll, I'll, I'll pose a very, very interesting question. But pose I, it out. It's, it's quite, okay. No, it, it will take some time, so I'll do it after. Uh, but right. um, essentially, yeah, like I... Going back to Russell Brand, I only think it's in his best interest. That's why he's exposing them. I don't think he's doing it for a selfless act. Good. 100%. No way. And I agree with you. However, mm. if, the, if the selfish act is benefiting people and it's bringing knowledge, I don't care. 100%. Because he's opened my eyes to a lot of shit that I believed was going on anyway. And it's like, oh, mm. so I wasn't crazy. This is actually happening. Do you know what I mean? Because I never believed that these people at the top had our best interest at heart. But neither did he, that's why it's, it's amazing. <laughs> However, his benefits me more than theirs. His selfishness it's, benefits it's, it's me it's, more it's, than theirs. Is he a reliable source? It, What's the brand, of course. If man's giving you receipts and you can check this, yeah. of course. Mm. You can check, like you can Google this stuff and see it. So it's like raw. He's not giving you anything that's bullcrap. He would have been outed years ago. Like, bro, your, your facts aren't correct. So what, just to ask, what were the facts he, would, he was giving? I, I haven't read That's too much. because I haven't memorized Just, just from top of your head, just, well, just top of your head. Top of the head. Yeah. All right, so like, he was talking about how Pfizer, do you know about Pfizer yeah. and that? Yeah. Like, they're, they're funded by, I don't want to mess up his facts, but just to put it in basics, they're funded by the, I don't want to say it because it might be wrong, but the gist of what I'm saying is they're funded by the, the government. Yes. Right, and they would lobby to pass certain things. So, like, do you know the FDA? Yeah. So, like, for those that don't know, they basically regulate your food and your drugs to make sure that they're safe. Yeah. And the same people, uh, let me get this right, the same people that fund the FDA, they, so they they work with them. The same people that fund them, yeah, work with the FDA. So 
basically they're passing certain drugs mm. because they're being paid by the people that are regulating of course, them. Of that, that's, that's always been happening, to be honest. No, it's that's always... recent. No, it's recent. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, other situations. Look, yeah, if you yeah, have yeah, COVID-19, yeah. they had the contracts for all the, um, all the PPE. And, and that was given to like a relative of, of government. Like so you some, see what I'm someone's saying? giving it to a friend, you know, mm. set up a company, order this in and you make this much. Mm. It's, it's always happened this way, unfortunately. But yeah. at least now there's a brother that can it's tell you and it, yeah. show you the receipts. Yeah. Like, yo, these people are being paid by the same... No, these people are... The people that regulate them are paying them. So it's mm. almost like, yo, pass this for me. Yo, yo, tick this off for me. That's 100%. basically what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, this is a new drug. It can cause this, but just tick this off for me. Yeah. And over the years, like, for example, these statistics are wrong, but let's just say back in the day, the drugs that were lobbied and pushed um, to the FDA, mm. they were ticked off 80% of the time. Now, for yeah. example, they're ticked off. No, no, sorry. Before, they were ticked off maybe 30% of the time, 40% of the time. So they were getting, no, that's not safe. No, that's not safe. No, that's, that's not safe. Yeah. Now they're being ticked off like 80% of the time. What's that telling you? Fast track. Fast track. What is that? That's scary <laughs> numbers, yeah, bro. Yeah, 100%. Do you know what I mean? Before they were regulating it more thoroughly, and again, these numbers are probably wrong, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. They're passing a lot more food and drugs that shouldn't really be passed. Yeah. So that's worrying. But so to me, bro, if you're giving me the information that benefits me, if you're, if you're selfish and you're doing it to get views and boss your YouTube channel, I don't care, bro, because you're giving me some righteous knowledge bro what are the other people giving me so so on the other side of things then um yeah. because obviously it's hand i hope in, i'm making sense hand in, by the way. I'm no, making sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah no but hand yeah. in hand obviously you know is is russell brown a rapist bro um spat the water up <laughs> bro, bro, i can ask i i went there bro i can't say yes or no, no i wouldn't say could, rapist but i'd say predator Pre predatory do you, yeah do you believe allegations i don't know him to say I believe an allegation, to say someone said anything, he's got bread, he's famous, people will say things to just so, bring... Yeah, go on, sir. So let's say, for example, something like... Um, I'll, put it, I'll put it this way, like, it, it all comes down to an abuse of power, right? Yeah. That's, that's the way I'm looking at it. Let's say, for example, Russell Brand had his own TV, because I was actually reading about stuff he was allegated for. And he, he is someone who, from what I remember, openly admits that, yeah, he loves sex and he loves... Very promiscuous, right? So he could be um, having a talk show, just be having a, um, talking to the crowd, right? And then from what I've read, he, he could have an assistant pass the mic to a woman who has a hand up in the, in, the, in the stand. And then he could do like this, tap his hand or something, and that basically means I want this woman in my bedroom after the show. Oh, I heard, yeah, I heard he's very promiscuous. Stuff like that. Yeah. That could be seen quite... That is quite predatory. Oh, how so? It's... It's, it's, it's his nature. It's his nature. There is... It's, yeah. it's almost like there is no words being said. Nothing exchanged. Just get this woman to my hotel room after this. Does she have a choice? Who? The woman. Yeah, of, of course. But it still, it still doesn't, it still doesn't take no, away No, but I'm saying that like she can say yes or no, right? But it still doesn't... But it's still, is it still not... An, uh, would you still Abuse not say it's the power. power? Abuse of power. Well, all right, so wouldn't you class someone who's in shape that has sex appeal, is he abusing his power? He still has influence, right? So this person who's attractive, mm. that knows that they're physically attractive, mm. they have influence because of that. Is that abusing their power? But let's, but let's, let's look at the actual situation here, though. Mm. He hasn't said a word. He's, he's, just, he's, he's done like a little gesture of emotion, and his assistant already knows that's what he means. Yeah, but I, I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to catch yeah. him. We used to say it's like, it's like Chris Brown, for instance. You know, like he Chris, was, Chris Brown, you see girls fucking, like, sorry, you, feel, you see girls like fainting at the concert. You know but, but this... Like, you could just say, yeah, back room. <laughs> but, yeah. But, he, but he still directly has said to, this, to the woman, Chris yeah. Brown... No, but he hasn't, though. What do you mean? Look, a lot of those, these celebrities, they can't do that, bro. Because they're... At a certain level, like Lil Wayne, for example, I think I saw a video of, of him just passing, passing the, phone. the phone. But this, there's, there's still a direct contact between no, but the there's two. There's not though, because his guy gave the girl the phone. Okay. He didn't speak to her. He's, but he's okay. Put either way, right? The, the, the thing is still the same. It's still an abuse. Call it what it is. It is. It's not about whether it's being right or wrong. It's more of is it an abuse of power? No, an abuse of power is yeah. Harvey Weinstein to me. An abuse of power is 
if you don't fuck me, you're not getting this movie role. Mm, yeah. That's an abuse of power. Right. Him saying, do you want to fuck me? Mm. Here's, here's my phone, come to the hotel room. She can say yes or no. There's no, if you don't do this, there's this consequence. But I think that's when it's an abuse of power. You're right, but then we still yeah. have to look at the, at the, at the um, actual facts of the situation that these women have still come out and said that this is sexual assault or he's done something But to then them. does that make it sexual assault like we have to tread lightly here because i'm that comes out of consent this is what i'm trying to yeah, say but i'm saying if he gives consent, them yeah. consent is you're giving them the choice mm. you're right but at the i end, don't think that's fair to say you're right but at the end of the day these women have still come out and but does that make it right if i say mm. you punched me in the face just mm. now just because you said I well, there must be some sort of proof, though. If, mo if multiple women have come out no, and said, no, no, no. the thing is, if you're if you're in, the, in if yeah. you're in the limelight, if you're a celebrity, you're a target. You're a target. You're a target for these people things. financial, you financial, like, yeah. you know, people won't do this for a money grab or attention. Yeah. We okay. can't act like this does not happen. This is situation. yeah. Which one was people saying he put hot sauce in a condom. <laughs> Ridiculous shit. Look at Drake. Look at Drake situation. With the from what, from what I've read, right? From, from 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 what I've read, from, from what I'm read, right? If 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 it how, for the Drake situation, how many people actually came out and said that? It was just it was just her, innit? It was just her. So for Marshall Brown, multiple people have come out. Yeah, and but said, multiple people have come out about other celebrities. But but this is so that so it's like okay, it's almost like put it this way for Drake, right? If one person has said that for him, he probably already is aware that, okay, cool, mm. I'm in this situation, so I do know people can take advantage and I am a target. So how can I limit that? Right. If multiple people can come out for you as a, as a celebrity, multiple people, mm. if let's say five people can come out and say that, at what point do you go, do you know what? Maybe there is something that I... And that, that's my problem yeah. with allegations because that could result because my man's game ain't tight. Meaning, mm -hmm. Drake's game is probably solid. Pretty so he amazing. only fucks with chicks that have something to lose, yeah. right? Yeah. For example, Drake can be like, I'm only fucking with things that have something to lose as well. Correct. High end, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Russell could have been scatty with his thing. Oh, he has been. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. So it comes down to his game and how he patterns his things. So it might not be necessarily that he's a predator, yeah. but he's just scatty with it. And when you're scatty with it, you end up fucking with the wrong things. Like how you can fuck with the wrong things and get burnt. It's the same thing, mm. right? So with Drake, I reckon everything he does is just tight. Mm -hmm. That's what I think, how one person can have a load of allegations and one person might not, because they just don't flaunt their dick about to everyone. When you're famous, you have to be more responsible mm. with who you're fucking. So it could be a fact of Russell was just back in his heyday wild and they're like these money grabbing things are like fuck it she's saying something if i say something i might be able to get money as well do you see what i'm saying that's the yeah yeah put the hot pepper sauce in the car though <laughs> 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 what i'm saying <laughs> well think about it i heard think about, about that, the time yeah? yeah think about the time when um chris brown was saying a girl got into his house and started cooking Broke into his house and started cooking. Um, I, I, this is what I heard. And this is what I'm it's saying. Crazy. So like, this is the chicks that you're coming into contact with when you're famous. So all I'm saying is, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not fair to automatically believe it. We have to take into account that he is a celebrity. He is mm -hmm. famous. People want to money grab. He might have done it. I'm just saying, I don't know the man in it. Mm. And... I need the proof and the facts. And the proof and the facts come out, cool, you did it, bro, go jail. But without that, the you shouldn't be able to just yeah. say I did something and, oh, right, he's guilty because yeah. multiple people said it. He's famous. Yeah. Now, if you're a brother on the ends that works at Tesco's and then five, six girls are... A bit different, isn't it? It's just like, rah, like, ten, seven, eight, nine, ten girls are saying you did something. You probably did. Probably yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Of course. But I, I see what you mean. The media runs a narrative sometimes. They yeah, can control yeah, yeah. the narrative. They can, they can pick what the story is today. And yeah. that's what we're running with, and that's what most people believe. So yeah. One, I think that's a big problem, yeah. One, one final thing, just to wrap up, like, I think, yeah, I, I definitely agree wholeheartedly with what people are saying, and it is, it is important. Um, at the end of the day, 
he's getting into bed with these people, right? So if you're getting into bed with the media and all these corporations and whatnot, you know your enemy, you know who you're up against. So if you're now going to go up against them mm. and they're going to use that against you, then hey ho, like... Yeah, doesn't mean you did it, but I hear what you're saying. This there's is it. consequences. So, you know, this doesn't is mean it. you did it, This though. is it. And I think at the end of the day, like, I, I'm, I'm someone who... This is, this, is, this, this is just my view. A lot of times I just think there's just no smoke without fire. Because one thing that I've, one thing that I've actually visually experienced, experienced myself and also observed is um, something that we may not, I may not even deem, deem as disrespectful or, or can make someone uncomfortable, can actually be, and they may just have to um, process it or they haven't properly processed it. So for example, has anyone seen um, YSK Osiris and there's a there's an Suki Hana. Yeah, I've seen all of that, yeah. Yeah, where um he that's, he, that's obvious. That, no, that, no, no, but just just the actual example. Oh, I see what you're saying. How he didn't deem it as nothing. Literally, he he just the examples of what he went to try and kiss her right mm. in front of everyone right, and she was laughing and playing it off, and then afterwards she was like, that was wild. That was so uncomfortable, but yeah. I couldn't say anything in that moment because. I didn't want to, you know, infect, affect him or, or her. So, yeah, so, 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 something like that, right? If, let's say, for example, someone wants to say that uh, he was, he was, I'm not, I'm not saying this is what they're saying. Yeah, let's yeah. say, for example, someone wants to say um, what he did was a bit predatory or this or that. And then on the other hand, someone wants to say, but she was smiling and she was laughing and she didn't seem like, she seemed like she was cool with it. It, it, it gives the sense of, Oh, she looks okay with it. So if she says anything now, then maybe she might be making it up. You know? This is the thing. I agree with you. I agree with everything you said. That's different because I've seen it. I'm just saying, Russell Brown, I've not seen anything. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're right, bro. Because yeah. I can look at that and be like, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, with that, I would agree with you. Like, my man had lack self awareness of what's going on. Yeah. However, I'm saying I just haven't seen it. <laughs> All I'm saying is I, I don't want to be the guy to be like, yeah, I believe it. Because he, probably he's famous. We yeah. just need to have the facts. Facts That's is it. facts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He could have done it, bro. He might not have. <laughs> I'm just saying I, there's no receipt. So let's let the court and all of that handle it. Con but consent for a man is a scary thing. 100%. 100%. <sighs> yeah. Trust me. And consent can change it's during the act. That's, that's, a, that's a crazy thing. Literally. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> bring me as a regular, man. I want to be the boosie. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to get back to this one next yeah. time. Yeah, so there's a lot to discuss here. <laughs> Dope, man. Appreciate but, it. But yeah, no, it's been good having you, honestly. Appreciate it. Um, for, for the people, where can we find you? Where can we find your... Uh, you shot a video today. Obviously, yeah, I won't talk too much about it. Yeah, yeah, but where, where can we find that? When's it, when's it getting released, roughly? As soon as it's edited, man. Uh, he's quick with it, though. But as soon as it's edited, I'm going to think that out in the days afterwards, man. But um, Instagram, Reese Miller, R-E-C-E. M I L L E R underscore. Appreciate it, man. Love, love, love. Keep living loud. Ch check him out on Spotify as well. Spotify, Reese Miller. All there, man. YouTube is Dude Named Reese. D U D E Named Reese. R E C E. For the fitness and the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fitness. Cool. Fitness, not oh, that's music. The fitness. That's the fitness. Yeah, and the yeah. music's Reese Miller. Reese Miller. So the, the channel will be called Loud Pack. And Loud that's Pack, where you nice. see me and Cardo. Please check out my, my guy, Cardo, man. Um, Brilliant artist, brilliant artist. Cardo Blonde, K-A-R-D-O-B-L-O-N-D-E. If you guys need any videos, you've got the talented O. Dot here, hood legend O. Dot Shaman. Come check out, do the interviews with Peter. I've had a good time, man. I was a bit sketchy coming in there. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's been a vibe, man. Check out the man then. We're doing bits, bro. So, on, love.